So, about five days ago, Diane and I had to say goodbye to Mochi, our dog. I don't even know where to start with this. This is way too emotional for Diane especially. She, you know, I don't think she'd feel comfortable being on camera right now. It's gonna be a different video. I just wanna talk for a little bit and then I'm just gonna roll footage of one of the sweetest companions anybody could have ever asked for. Mochi was, without a doubt, the sweetest dog I've ever met. Just so full of love all the time. Diane raised Mochi from a puppy 13 years ago. And when I met Mochi, she actually was in need of surgery. And if she didn't get that surgery, she was gonna die right then and there. And Diane poured every resource she had into making sure that Mochi got that surgery and saved her life. And that's when Mochi entered my life. And I was able to spend six years, some of the best years of my life, with that dog. And I know a lot of people think about dogs as sort of a, a pet, but I gotta be honest, Mochi was so much more than that. She was family. And we're left with this, like, this void. Everything we do, everywhere we go, everything reminds us of her. It didn't matter if we were at home or if we were out camping. She always woke us up with a huge smile, just so content. No matter where we took her, it's like she loved being in the outdoors. She loved the adventures, but all she ever wanted to do was be right there with us. It's been one of the hardest weeks of our lives. And it's, it hasn't even been a full seven days. We've spent every single day just crying until we can't cry anymore. And then it comes in waves and then we just can't cry because we've got no more tears left. And then it's like we're rehydrated and just cry and cry again. And so about a year ago, she started to slow down a little bit. She still had tons of energy, but you could tell it was a bit more of a struggle. I'd stopped taking her down you know, long cliff trails to get to the beach and just kept her up on the bluffs. We had our whole circuit of trails. We would walk on the coastal bluffs or I would drive her to the beach and then take her out and we could walk the beaches and play a little fetch, keep it a little bit more mellow. But she was still very, very mobile. And about a month ago, she uh, just started to lose control over her back legs, just a little bit, but enough that it was noticeable. She'd fall every once in a while and she started to, to knuckle. So she would try to stand on her paw and instead would stand on sort of like the, the carpels, like the wrist. And so we took her to the vet and they told us that she had this degenerative disorder where it was given basically maybe a few months, maybe even a, a few weeks where she was eventually gonna be paralyzed in her back legs and then eventually paralyzed in her front legs. And so we tried everything we could, you know, we tried to, to give her therapy and we tried to give her pain meds that were prescribed and CBDs and everything that we could to make it as easy on her as possible. And the hardest part was she was all there mentally. It was just her body was given out. I guess about two weeks ago, um, she got to the point where she could barely stand. We had to help her up. We had a strap that we would use to help her stand. I'd carry her out to the yard. We would try to help her crouch to pee. It's kept trying and thinking she's gonna get better and eventually we decided we gotta get her a wheelchair. If her back legs are gonna be paralyzed, at least her front legs are good and maybe we can get six months, something like that. And we got the wheelchair and within the first 20 minutes we could tell that her back legs were pretty much not working and her front legs were starting to knuckle. And uh, 
the vet told us we really had maybe a few weeks. And uh, it wasn't a few weeks. She got to the point where she couldn't stand at all. We realized pretty quickly that she only had a couple of days left, which meant she couldn't pee. We'd try to hold her up, both of us at the same time, but you imagine trying to relax to do something as basic as peeing. And you got straps around your belly and two people trying to hold you up. She couldn't go. So eventually she went about 48 hours and couldn't poop. Went over 24 hours without peeing. Still drinking tons of water like she always did. You can imagine though, that's just gonna lead to a, a bladder infection, UTI. And it's just gonna put her in a tremendous amount of pain. So eventually we had to make the really, really tough call. We decided the only humane thing to do would be to put her to sleep. So the last day we took her here on the sand. And at this point she couldn't she couldn't stand and walk out of the house. She couldn't she couldn't walk more than a couple feet without collapsing. So we brought her here and I carried her out of the car and I brought her to the sand. <laughs> and I don't know why, but she was able to stand just long enough that she was able to pee just a little bit. It wasn't as much as she needed, but she was able to pee. And right then and there, both Diane and I just broke down into tears. We were so relieved that she had even just a little bit of relief at the end. We brought her out onto the sand and laid her down in the, the damp sand right above the high tide line because that's where she wanted to be. She always overheated, she liked to lay down she didn't really like her bed. She wanted to lay down on the tile. She might rest her face on the bed or sleep halfway on the bed and halfway on the ground. She was a warm doggy, lots of fur. So we put her on the damp sand just above the high tide line. And then we just hung out with her all day with a really good friend. And she was just surrounded by friends and family all day long. She was so happy. She was so happy that last day. All smiles. One of the, the coolest things, so th this video is obviously not monetized. That would be horribly disgusting. I could never do that. But there were a few things that we got in the end that I am so glad we did that really helped her and helped us. And I'll leave some links in the description. These are not like affiliate links or anything. I'm not making profit off this. But this is something that if you have an elderly dog or even a dog that's just getting up there in age and this is on your mind even a little bit, this is something that I'm so glad that we did. We are so glad that we did. Diane ordered these print kits. One was ink and one was like a, a clay plaster kind of resin. And she ordered them and they arrived while we were at the beach on the last day. So I drove home and got them and came back and we were able to get prints of her paws. And ever since she passed, we've been looking at those every single day. And they, they do offer the ink print at certain places that will cremate your pet. But I gotta be honest, I think it means so much more to us that those prints were taken while she was alive and happy and they remind us of that last moment, those good moments with her. And so I would really recommend if you have a pet doing this, don't even wait till they're not doing well, just do it. 
and have those. And it comes in a cool little frame, so you've got the print and then you've got space for photos with them. And I'm really glad we did that. Mochi's least favorite place on the planet was the vet. She knew that whenever we took her there, that she needed to be there for her own health. And so she was always so sweet. All the vets always said the same thing. They're like, your dog is the sweetest dog. But she hated being at the vet. All those smells and sounds, and she just knew it was not, it was not her place. She's like us. She wanted to be outside. So the thought of putting her to sleep in a vet was like not even on the table. There is no way we were going to do that. And so we found a place here in the Bay Area that has vets that will come to your home and do this. And so we were able to reach out to them and they came to our home and this woman was super respectful and we were able to lay out a blanket in our garden and have mochi between Diane and myself. And this woman came in and basically just gave her a bunch of drugs and Mochi just went to sleep in our arms and then once she was fully sedated and just snoring then she gave her the second round and um, Mochi died in our arms and that was one of the saddest things that we've ever had to do But I'm trying to continually think about it in the way that like she was in so much pain she couldn't stand on her own two feet. But the bottom line is she had an amazing last day on this earth and she died in our arms knowing how much we loved her and how much we do love her. And that's more than I can say for most people. You know, we don't get to choose when we go. She had an absolutely incredible life, full of adventure, full of love. And as sad as it was, it was a great death. I guess the last thing I want to say before I just roll a bunch of ridiculously cute footage of one of the sweetest dogs that ever lived is just that if you have a pet in your life who's getting up there, make sure you take them out and make sure you do as much as you can with them. Make sure you spend as much time as you can with them and keep your camera rolling. I didn't even realize how many photos and how many videos I had of Mochi until she passed and then we started looking through all of this and I'm so glad we did because every day since Mochi has passed, We've just been watching this footage over and over again. So with that in mind, here's a bunch of ridiculously cute footage of Mochi out on adventures. Good morning, Mochi. Good morning, Smiley Dog. Good morning, Mochi. <laughs> Hi, Mochi. Ooh, Pr pretty little dog. Yo. We got cilantro over here. We got a whole bunch of hot peppers in here. We've got radishes. We've got dill. We've got a mochi. <laughs> Ready? Okay, go get it. Good girl. Bring it here. Good girl. What a good girl. Oh, it's a striped bass, babe. Nice. That's a striper, dear. Heck yeah. 
I've never even caught a striper. Nicely done, babe. Gone. Well, we didn't get it on film, but Diane's been fishing for about, what, 10 minutes? She just caught a catfish, which is what we were here for. That's pretty awesome, dear. She's just what you, so... What, yeah, what do you think of that, Mooch? Go get it. Good girl. Good girl. Is it dinner time? Are you hungry? Is it time for food? Are you hungry? Okay. Okay. Good dog. Come on, pup. Are we happy? Mm -hmm. oh, 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 babe, that's so awesome. I think it's okay. No, I think it's fine. Really? Yep. Very, very first morel ever. So, so stoked. Look at that. Whoa, don't knock over the other ones, pup. We got two here. Boom. Boom. Did you have fun? <laughs> She's like, I want food. It's past my dinner time. Well, uh, let's see. That was a very successful second weekend going for morels. Yeah, it's definitely deep enough that there's going to be some trout like that size in there. You ready to go fishing? Look at that. That is a gorgeous little trout. Oh, she doesn't know what to make of it. I'm sorry I can't let you out, but you were chasing the you were chasing the Jake yesterday. I can't have you right next to the decoy. Don't no no no. You're gonna stay back there. Yep, I'll let you out if I get something, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna come in for breakfast. Those toms are on to me. Yep, I'm coming in. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm coming in. Find it. Good girl. You bring it to me? Drop it? Good girl. What do we think, Moach? Did you have a good time? She says she's a natural born hunter. That's right, you're a bird dog though, but I'm glad you like squirrels. Yeah, I am. Yum, 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 yum. I have my good foraging companion here. Mochi. Those? Is it good? Mochi says yes. Sit. Good girl. Okay, we're gonna wait. We're gonna put that. Wait. Put that on your nose. Okay. Good girl.